perspective, doesn't it? It's like going to a prayer advance. By the time you leave, you know you're not better than anybody else. You're broken. And you know what? Only at that point in time can you really help your brother. That's it. You, you have to be humbled because otherwise you're going to be like the Pharisees who think they've got it made. And so they can hypocritically judge. They can say, look, I have it all together. That's the hypocrisy. You got it wrong. Okay? And they've elevated themselves. It's like our political class. Okay. Don't want to lose our 501c3, so we're not going to go there. I have to go here, though, because we're running out of time. The narrow and wide gate. This, along with 721, is scary. One person asked me one time, Crop, your, your way, there's going to be few. If, if that's what you have to do to be saved, few people are going to get into heaven. Yeah, that's right. That's right. The road is narrow. Narrow. And, it, it, and I don't want to get into words and etymology and all this kind of stuff. And it, 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 but it portrayed something so narrow that you can't even go with your clothes on. It's like going through a gate that's so tight. And, but one thing I do want you to take away with, you have to go through, and I want a relationship. I want a relationship with you so bad I keep forgiving you over and over only for you to love me awesome he says look after all this people people doing church people doing things we've learned in this era of covid um look at the seats okay some people won't come back to church some people matthew seven twenty one says this not everyone who says to me lord lord will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. That should be the scariest verse in all of Scripture. Let me tell you why. The person you're sitting right next to might be that person and our guard is down in it they're sitting right next to you they're in church every day they might have a ministry they might have they might come to church you know three times a week they might pray regularly they might even recognize who jesus is <clears throat> and understand their sin that's good i'm not saying it's not good that's not the fruit that we, we look at. And we do evaluate fruit. Because there is a difference. There is a difference, people, between fellowshipping with somebody and witnessing to somebody. Now, you don't have to tell somebody that knows the, the way to salvation over and over again the way to salvation. But you need to know you're walking along somebody that just hasn't made that commitment. A mark of a true believer isn't that he understands his sin, he's convicted of it, and he repents of it. A mark of a true believer isn't that he recognizes God, but he loves God so much. That's his world. That's his, when he prays to God, he expects it. When he prays to God, he knows who he's praying to. That's a believer. When, when somebody is continually giving God the glory. No more. It's a humbleness that, look, in me I have nothing. I can give nothing. It's all to God's glory. When somebody doesn't esteem himself better than somebody else, that everyone is a part of God's family. Everyone. There is, everyone's important. And it's not about me. Let me tell you, the person that sets up the chairs, who is it? Right. You only know. But you know, it's important that they're set up, isn't it? Just because Glenn gets up here and, and worships with it, which is awesome, people will say, oh, well, Glenn. No, everyone's important. 
everyone. And everyone's job is important within the body of Christ to serve in the body of Christ. And when they forsake the fellowship, you can't Zoom church forever, people. He says, look, the Lord says, look, don't forsake the fellowship. That, does, that doesn't say unless there's a pandemic. It says, look, don't forsake it. Because he knows by yourself, you're going to flounder. You're going to fail. We need each other. This is the family that you need. And see, too many people, too many churched people, churched people are sitting beside you in the, in, in, in the pew or the chairs unsaved. You know, James tells us to, is to check our salvation, to, to evaluate ourselves. You know, there, there was a person recently that said, how do I know? I know who God is. I know who Christ is. I know I'm a sinner. How do I know? When... When is it? When can I be assured? Because the devil doesn't want you to be assured of anything. And just because you are sure doesn't make you saved. Oh, I got a date and a time. When? When do you know? And you know what? When you're discipling people, tell me that that's not a question. And, and tell me that's not a question for the people sitting on the hill. How do I? How do I enter the kingdom? What's, what is it? How do I know? You should kind of be prepared to help them evaluate that. It's not for you to evaluate, really. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Are you grieved over sin? Why? Because somebody saw you or you got to have an affront to God? Do you grieve over a sin that nobody ever saw? That's a pretty good mark. Is God first and foremost in everything you do? It's a pretty good mark. Pretty good one. Do you seek after him? Do you look at somebody? Do you look at somebody and say, they need Jesus? Not for you, for them. Do you hold yourself a little lower and not worry about what man says about you? Let's pray. Heavenly gracious Father, we're thankful for today. We're thankful for an opportunity to <clears throat> go through some of the Beatitudes, Lord. And we, we could spend so much time. They're so rich. But the most important thing that comes from them is the attitude from the heart, Lord. That we know you, that we love you, that we want a relationship with you, and that you're standing there forever, forgiving and forgiving and forgiving, only for us to come. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to present your, <clears throat> your word today. I pray it was pleasing to you. If it was not, I, I pray it would soon be for God. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
for Compassion International. So uh, make sure you do your check-ins today. Let's see. And our missionaries this uh, uh, month are the uh, Daniel Estrada family. So please keep them in your prayer. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on all around the world, and we need to be praying for our missionaries right now uh, in the different countries, especially with the COVID stuff going on. It's very hard to minister these days, so remember them. And our men's prayer breakfast uh, is every Sunday morning at 8 o'clock downstairs. So you gentlemen, if you'd like to come and join for that, uh, we'd love to have you there. And uh, don't forget Tuesday night, uh, the ladies' meeting uh, is in the portable over here at 7 o'clock. Uh, so if you can either do that via in person or I think we're still broadcasting on Zoom, so you can do that. So uh, pray for that group. Also, I think uh, uh, Awana is, I think Diana said this is their last Wednesday. Um, so that's this Wednesday at, at 6.30, so remember that. Uh, uh, put that on your calendar. Make sure your kids are here for that. Awesome, awesome. So the Awana store is going to be open and epic is what I heard so that's awesome um, and don't forget the uh, SMIDAC uh, group meets tonight uh, in the portable building six to eight and of course there's always Sunday school for the SMIDAC group so are you amen anything else um, we're also asking if you can provide a meal for the SMIDAC group uh, uh, you can see sister Daniela uh, Danielle and uh, uh, get that worked out with her so amen kids love food Let's also remember our Stephen ministers, you know, uh, there's been some struggles there, so uh, please, please lift them up and also lift up those that they're ministering to, so amen. All right, anything else? I think that's all the announcements, and with that said, why don't we stand and go to the Lord with a word of prayer this morning. Father God, I thank you for today, for the opportunity to be in your house and to worship you. God, and right now we lay aside everything that could distract us and we place our focus in upon you and you alone, Lord. Father, we thank you for those that are here. We ask a blessing on our pastor as he's away from us today that you would guide his travels and keep him safe and bring him back to us, Father. So, Father, we thank you for this time and we commit it to you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. <laughs>
Lord, to have that assurance this morning that your grace reached down to us. And Lord, that we have hope of eternal life, not only in this life, but life in eternity. Hallelujah. So, Father, as we've come together today, I ask that you would move in this place and stir our hearts as we worship you, Lord. That the Holy Spirit would minister to each heart and life here. Lord, we all came in different ways today, and only you know what needs to be done. So we're asking you to use your spirit to reach each heart and life that is here today, either live or in Facebook or in the parking lot. So, Father, we thank you for this time. Lord, we commit it to you. And, Lord, we give you the praise in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. You may be seated this morning. A little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more. Praise God we're here, and it's a beautiful, I see sunshine, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God, we need to remember our pastor as he's away from us, uh, doing, doing the great work he's involved in, and uh, this morning he asked me if I would uh, share the message with you. Uh, most of our message is going to be taken out of Isaiah chapter 40, so if you kind of want to turn there and hold your finger there, that would probably be a good spot. 
we will be bouncing around a little bit, so that's not going to be the only 